Welcome to the Decent People Podcast, a production of Decential Media, where we're committed to telling the stories of the founders, builders, and visionaries who are creating a new decentralized economy and internet experience. You guys know it as Web3 or blockchain, and we're going to bring you the smartest and most interesting people in the space for intimate conversations that reveal their background, how they got into crypto in the first place, and what they're doing today to make a decentralized future a reality. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to check out our site at Decentral.io. Now, to the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Decent People podcast for Decentral Media. I'm Steve Ladden, your host. This episode, we're here with Christian Hardy of Moment Ranks. He is the content lead over at Moment Ranks, where he oversees uh, a team of uh, NFT creators and Web3 uh, content creators. Uh, Christian Hardy, welcome. What's up? I'm happy to be here. Let's yeah. Talk to the tease. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, uh, on that tip, uh, you know, did you ever think growing up NFTs would be something you'd be into, that you'd be leading a team? I mean, what, what were your early aspirations that that uh, then led you to your current position? Um, yeah, well, I've always been into like creating content in general. Like <clears throat> my... I started basically writing when I was in high school and then like start. So went to journalism, went to content marketing and then from content marketing, I uh, quickly got from content marketing. I was kind of just like, I was working in an agency and didn't really like it a lot. Like that life of agency and really what I was doing. And so I was kind of looking for something new right then. And then NFTs came up, Top Shot came up and, and it kind of, Went from there so in a, in a weird way like content I've, I've always wanted to create content i like bringing new information to people i like helping people learn um and sh you know helping them find info that they might not find other otherwise um i really enjoy that but i mean so i guess kind of but obviously nfts are a whole new thing so no you know what i'm saying uh from like did i ever see myself in them i mean no i did not imagine that there would be five hundred thousand dollar monkeys slinging around the internet every day um and that they would lead the entire like space but uh yeah now we're here and um no i i uh it, 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 i mean it makes sense now but at the time when i first started learning about it, it doesn't it doesn't even make any sense so hopefully i'm down to talk about it for the listeners too to like understand kind of why things have developed in the way they developed this year and like you know in nfts and it's just a whole crazy world honestly yeah and on that tip what how did you even get into nfts and how did that even become a thing that you sought out or became involved in after school i've always been into sports um but like i so after college i started a daily fantasy sports subscription site um basically so like you could get your advice for daily fantasy sports so i've always been into sports like even before that i was writing sports at the student newspaper basketball football all these different uh things and that's how i started writing I always wanted to be a sports writer, but, um, so, okay. I start daily fantasy sports, do that COVID hits. I'm like, I got to find a new job because there's no sports anymore to make content about. So I worked in a marketing agency. I kind of liked that idea of content marketing. I, I learned more about it in that little bit of time. I was there about a year. And then I found NFTs because I was, like I said, I was in daily fantasy sports and a lot of those people, um, basically, kind of jumped over to NFTs, but it was through NBA Top Shot. So NBA Top Shot, and that's how the side I work for Moment Rank started as well, was through NBA was with NBA Top Shot. But we started with um with Top Shot and I found it I found it because basically uh, uh, there was an article from one of actually like a, a I don't know if you want to call him like a thought leader, Jonathan Bales uh, in daily fantasy sports, in sports betting. And um he wrote an article about NBA Top Shot and why he was buying moments and it kind of just started to really take off from there. So I got in in January, middle of January, probably like January 18th or so in 2021. And just because, you know, I like sports already. So I was like, this is a ridiculous idea buying highlights for hundreds of dollars. But like, let me let me see what it's about because it's sports. I'm like, well, let's and also Jonathan Bills wrote about it. So I was like, let's find out. So I put like 20 bucks on there. And uh, it like I think I listed my moments like so they're called moments, the highlights that you buy on Top Shot. And I listed them like the moment I bought them for like 2x. Now I was just like, OK cool um 
and I didn't really log on again until I until the next day uh, they sold. And I was like, okay, why did these sell? Maybe it was like two days, but why did these sell for double? What is happening? So then I was like, all right, let me really investigate and like actually look into this platform at that point. Um, and yeah, so that was basically how I found NFTs was through Top Shot. Um, I really got into it then and the market was buzzing every single day, like just constant trading. Obviously, that's a great part of NFTs. There's no... It's 24 seven. There's no closed hours except for when like Top Shot goes on maintenance. Other than that, like it's 20, it's literally 24 seven. You can trade whenever you want. You can stay up till 4 a.m. trading um, and trying to find flips. Um, so that was fun. Uh, and then from there, yeah, I found Moment Ranks, which really allowed me to dive deeper into NFTs because first of all, I was able to go on there on, onto moment ranks full time. Once they raised money in April was when it became a, uh, official. It was like, so like, it was just like a friend of a friend. And then I just like begged them to hire me based like every day. I was just like in this guy's text being like, so what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Like I'm trying to get hired because <laughs> I, I really like top shot. And I was like, I really want to create content around it. And I was like, yeah. So that's also another thing. I feel like you just gotta like put yourself out there extremely hard and see what happens it's hard for people to put themselves out there if they don't know what they want but from what you just said you knew what you wanted you like top shot you wanted to be a part of something that that you saw had a future and you went after it and i, I think a lot of people can learn from that and relate to it hopefully where it's like hey when you have that clarity within yourself and you and you know what you want to do just go walls to the wall because mm -hmm. no one's going to do it for you you know yeah you, you can you can you can you're the biggest advocate for you is going to be yourself and it yeah, sounds like yeah. that's what you were for you yeah and and i feel like once you actually involve yourself in the space your brain will fire on so many cylinders that you didn't even know it would fire on like and you'll find new new passions but potentially even and like because you're around people who are just so smart all the time uh I, that are like bringing really original ideas that are like genuinely creative in whatever they're doing whether they're a developer or whatever like these are really in web3 for some reason there is a tendency for there to be like extremely creative people like go-getter people who don't just stick to like the bureaucratic ways of doing things it's like no we're shipping this we're shipping this like just do it just do it just do it like and so you that energy you'll find your own like you'll you'll can you'll constantly i feel like be evolving yourself because there's always something new in the space and then also just like around that same time that I went full time was when the apes minted, uh, the board apes minted. And from there, kind of that was when the whole NFT wave really started to take off because they were the first ones that did attend. They, they weren't the first ones that did attend 10K collection. They kind of took that idea from CryptoPunks, but they were one of the first ones that were getting a lot of attention for their 10K collection. And like, so then a lot of people were just trying to relay off that or parlay off that, I guess you could say. And, um, Lots of different things started popping up, and I was able to tweet about it from Moment Ranks, create content about it, trade myself. Um, yeah, and like obviously working in this space and being able to keep up with it all the time allowed me to like dive deeper into it. So, yeah, hopefully that kind of explains how I got into it. Totally. And and, and what when you, when you first in the in the early days of understanding Top Shot and getting into in those first uh, moments selling, what was it that that made you feel like hey this actually has potential this is this isn't going to go away nfts are are the future basically yeah the main thing for me and this is why i still tell a lot of people to start on top shot um when they start with nfts i'm like you should just get a top shot pack and because bro first of all it's easy you don't have to make a crypto wallet um but the main thing that stood out to me uh was the fact that you could buy something and you could just sell it back instantly like the fact that you had this digital thing that you could sell like it's so simple, really. It's really so simple. Like I say, I say to people a lot that don't that like my friends or acquaintances that don't understand NFTs or what I do, and I'm just like, they're literally just digital assets that you're able to sell. Like anything that is media, that is video, music, anything that is a digital file, it just allows you to sell it and prove that you own it, like in a ledger of who has owned it. It's it's that simple. Like, um, it's like reselling a DVD, like kind of like you know if you want to do that, it's just. It's so it's 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 gotten overcomplicated by like you know like I said board ape selling for 500k like yeah that's pretty that's pretty confusing and ridiculous uh, from the outside looking in and so but when you just boil it down to like what is actually happening here and maybe when you tell them that they're like 
well, why do we need that? And like, that's fair, you know, um, but like that, the power of that individually of just being able to sell a digital asset without, well, I guess on flow, you are trusting flow, but usually it's trustless on Ethereum. It's trustless, right? You're, you're transacting with no one look overwatching flow is technically flow is which who owns top shot owned by Dapper Labs. It's a whole other blockchain. And that one is technically like it, it's, it's the flow blockchain is open in other ways, but top shot basically like a closed ecosystem. So like, yeah. So there are like I, you're able to trade all the time, basically, other than, like I said, maintenance, Um, especially like back then when they had so many people coming into the site and they were like, weren't ready for that. There was a lot of maintenance, Uh, but the good old days of Top Shot. Um, But yeah, that was that was the main thing, honestly, with Top Shot specifically, like I said, like I just really like sports. And I, I I would say that there at the time like with the highlights that were out on there weren't. They, they, there were some really cool ones. Like there was one where LeBron is like, uh, uh, it's like a Kobe Bryant tribute and he does like a dunk that Kobe Bryant did. And it's really cool. And there's another one where like Vince Carter, uh, it's his last shot in the NBA that was on the site. And there were like some really good moments, uh, but there are also some like moments that I'm just like, these aren't very good highlights. I don't know why anyone would, would want to own these. I will say at this point, I feel like they've gotten a lot better with their highlight selection. And like in general, if you're an NBA fan, like, it's a fun platform to interact with in general uh, and and bond with the community of other NBA fans. And it's easier to bond with those specific NBA fans now on Top Shot because last year when I was on there, like a lot of the audience was just traders. Like they didn't care about the NBA, like literally at all. Um, and now it's like they've kind of weeded those people out and it's pretty much just people who care about the NBA. So if you really care about the NBA, that's another reason or just sports in general. It's a good like sports minded community. So uh, and that sounds so corny to say community, but it's really true. Like you, you do find people. I mean, I like so many friends from from Top Shot, um, different like private discords, and that were like trading and people uh, in the Top Shot community, people who actually work for Top Shot. That's another aspect of it that also kind of permeates through other NFTs, right? Is like you're able to just like expand your social circle um, and and choose through through your through your likes and interests, like whether that's music or top shot or monkey jpegs <laughs> totally totally and and on a on that tip when when trading what's the how does how does top shot uh, amongst other companies handle the idea of scarcity you know because obviously they're controlling the out the the how many moments are being minted how many uh different types of moments as you mentioned are yeah. being minted. What, how, do, how does scarcity play the role uh, in all of this that, you know, helps uh, uh, create value. Yeah. So top shot, I feel like they're still figuring a lot of that out of how scarcity plays into the greater marketplace and also just trying to meet demand in the right place and not oversupplying um, and making sure they are, because I, I think what they did in, in series two, right? So series two, there is how it happened was there was a huge bubble because there wasn't enough supply. So they were just like, Let's make a bunch of supplies so no one has to worry about there being crazy prices like this again. And the market tanked, um, like really bad. Um, and it's still gone down, to be quite honest with you. Um, but what I will say is that they are figuring out now that they are not going to bring in as many, as many people as fast as they thought. Like people came in so fast at that point when the market went crazy because they knew they could make a quick buck, right? And like that's not as easy to do on Top Shot anymore. There's definitely certainly like if you're paying really close attention, like challenges. And certain things you can do to like real find edges here and there if you really are an active active trader to do that but um i, I think that so point being like they're, they're really trying to find ways to meet the the current demand that they have of new people coming in also people that are already on the platform that are actually engaging and meeting them in the middle and also like they, they, they also have taken a lot of feedback of people too because they, they increased the, the mint count this year as well again of common moments like 60k in the middle of the season they were like this is too many moments we're not making 60k moments anymore um so that's you know that's one way of like you could tell that they are really just they're tr- figuring it out like they um and it sounds crazy because but it's also like no one's really done this before and they didn't know how fa- also that combined with the fact that they didn't know how fast people would come to their platform because you know last year people were rushing really quick uh, to the platform, but now there aren't. I mean, there's still people signing up every week. They're doing pretty good about marketing and and giving people um, new stuff, free stuff uh, for signing up and stuff like that, and getting them started. But 
there, it definitely was not any any anywhere close to the level of the onboarding that was going on in early last year. So um, it's just, it's just adjusting that and and figuring out. But yeah, scarcity in general also um, they, they do lay out like a, a a roadmap of sorts where it's like this player will not get this many this this player can only get this many common moments or he can only get this many legendary moments etc. Um, and that's another way that they kind of keep it in check. So it's like even if John Morant does like you know has like fifty incredible dunks that are number one on Sports Center, like they're not all going to be on Top Shot because they can only choose a certain amount. Um, so they have a level of scarcity for every player determined at the beginning of the year, which is actually pretty cool compared to like a sports card place where you don't you don't uh, sometimes you'll know the scarcity of a s- individual card, but you have no idea what their plans are for the grander scheme of like their entire cards. Um, but here, there's been a lot of communication. Like I said, it's changed, but it's changed. It's changed mid-season, but changed for the better mostly because they are declining supply. They're hearing the community's feedback, and they're like, "We should not be releasing this many moments." So, yeah, I, it's definitely very fluid. Um, it's something they're still figuring out, but they also are kind of like one of the first to do this, right? So, um, and they're also like a leader. A lot of other people just follow what they do uh, in, in a lot of ways. Fascinating. So, so when it comes to to moment ranks. What do you guys do, and and maybe talk a little bit about how that plays into the whole Top Shot community and and NFTs in that respect? Sure. Yeah. So we started um, as a Top Shot like valuation platform. We've evolved since then. So I'll just like say from there. I'll I'll go back to the Top Shot stuff mostly, but I also want to say like from the beginning, like we basically have evolved into being in a in as of now uh, a valuation site for Ethereum NFTs. Also, a site for, to help you learn about NFTs as well with content, obviously coming from the content team. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you could plug in your Ethereum wallet, you could plug in your Flow wallet, you could see your your valuations of both being in, as well as like NFL all day, which is NFL Top Shot basically, and then UFC. So that's all like on our site right now. We're also building out more there uh, for valuations across different chains. But yeah, so with Top Shot specifically, so we started. There was really like a need in the community for there to be valuations because. On top shot, you don't really see that. You have to do the math in your head. Um, so there was one site that was like super, super just like basic HTML called Intangible. Um, but intangible.market uh, and that uh, going back to the good old days top shot, that was like an early, early adopter top shot site, I feel like. But um, yeah, so we we basically were able to we 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 created a model that would allow you to value your serial numbers differently, which made us stand out. So so every moment on top shot is different because even though there's like a thousand of a certain moment, right? Every moment has a certain serial number. So that's what makes each of them different. Specifically the lower serial numbers being like number one, number two, and the Jersey number are like very valuable. So like in our model, we like modeled out to where, what are the values of those across different players? And it changes based on like, it changes based on like how well known the player is. Like if the player is like LeBron James, the number one is going to be way higher than the floor price of that moment versus like, because there's a, there's liquidity there, right? Like we've seen number one LeBron sell before, whereas like number one of like someone riding the bench, I'm not going to use a name. I don't want to insult anyone. Um, like there's not liquidity. No one wants to buy a number one of a player that, I mean, someone does. Um, actually, this guy Dingling owns millions of dollars worth of number ones on Top Shop. But in general, there's not much liquidity for number ones for really bad players. So that kind of scales differently. So our model, uh, that was part of our model as well, is like putting players, what category are players in? Are they really good? Are they not very good, et cetera. So, uh, and kind of looking at the market and contextualizing all of that um, in the model. So that that kind of helped us stand out at the time. Um, and yeah, and, and then from there, we also built in one of kind of the main utilities for moments. So before um, we, we created a fantasy, a daily fantasy game for Top Shot, which is basically like you pick moments uh, that are on your team. You pick moments, create your team uh, on the players that are playing every night. You can win prizes. Um, Dapper Labs, which has created Top Shot, has been gracious enough to like provide us with really cool prizes at this point. So we have like a pretty decent prize pool every single night. Um, and it, it, because it's it, it's honestly like the main utility for moments currently. I, I mean, the, the, the other utility for moments is like, it's a little bit more engaging now, but at the time there were challenges where you would basically just like, there'd be a pack drop and then you would need to get all the moments in that pack. And then you would get a new moment. Like, so it's like, that's, 
like yeah it's utility because you get something new but like it's just another moment <laughs> like um so and like it's cool don't get me wrong some challenges are also very cool like they had cool challenges i don't mean to say anything about them but i'm just saying like the you can actually do something with your moments right like you don't just look at them um so yeah and we built that out and that's been a really huge part of like our growth as well and people seeing us in the community and i think that that is a good test a little bit of a testament to what like longer term or not even longer term like what we're being built right now is like we've also uh, I, we also built like some social features from top shot which were like um a few things communities which were like token gated so like you could make a community for uh lakers fans and said if you don't if you have you could only join this community if you own 10 lakers moments or something like that and um and then you could have your own chat room you could have your own uh private play contest that's a the fantasy game is called play um and and you could basically interact in this one place uh we also started our own you, you would you would basically also get a private discord channel like in our discord so basically like these social features around top shot we also had other features and as well as like following being able to follow uh top shot accounts and you know and seeing their feed and and seeing their valuation stuff like that seeing their feed being like what are they what are they how are they interacting with the platform what are they buying what are they selling and i think a lot of that right so a few different things of like utility for your nfts like i don't want my nfts to just sit there and do nothing and also i want to i want to and i want to i want to create a, a community that i can actually engage with that isn't like overwhelming but aligns with the things that i like being like like i said like the lakers or whatever it might want to be a certain set or whatever um and i think those are like features that we use on top shot that will be really when that, that we're going to continue to build out for multiple you know ethereum nfts salon nfts etc um is those community features and we, we we're we're already well on our way there um there's a lot of like really cool community features we have coming out on on um for ethereum nfts which kind of definitely changed the game i mean like ethereum nfts you have you have a community treasury right and and that kind of you know like doodles they have like millions of dollars in their community treasury to do things with that you know it, and, and things that can come from the community being that would can support the brand um and and also support the creators who might be in that community um and so you know we really want to be able to leverage like so so just like you know with top shot they, they have dapper labs which can supply the community with the funds to do things and and by and our community tool gave communities the ability to organize and and interact with dapper in a way like get funds from dapper run events all these different things um uh and, and that all happened through like basically little sub communities on moment ranks and also in other ways but it's there were people that organized on moment ranks and kind of found that was their easiest way to communicate and like it's almost like a little social it's almost like a little social media for like your community um so and that's like and, but so if you think about it for other ethereum nfts a lot of ethereum nfts have like i said those community treasuries that can be like the dapper labs of this situation community treasury sits here social media this community social media sits over here the community so social media intermingle do their thing come up with ideas uh talk about what ideas are good what ideas are bad it's not discord it's not it's not like messy and just like constantly going it's it's organized into feeds and like uh able to i would think of it a lot like kind of facebook to be quite honest with you um is what things look like right now and and that's going to be something that continues to build be built out and kind of like the facebook for nft communities in, in a lot of ways I, I hate to dumb it down that way but it is true that um and also just like also like decentralized in a bit in, in a way right because if, if people have community treasuries and they're able to allocate funds to their communities then um they're able to like leverage those funds to build up those communities. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And, and as part of building those communities, how much for you specifically does your journalism background play into your oversight of, of the NFT and web three content creators, but then also knowing uh, how to cultivate external involvement and and awareness around what you guys are doing yeah it's been um it's been it's been huge uh for sure because ultimately i i think as a curator of information it's super important to uh in the space because 
you see a lot of you have to have like a really judgmental eye in this space because a lot of people are just talking gas you know there's no like real substance a lot of times and you have to on, on also be able to look up and like be like okay if i see something do i actually trust it and and know kind of how to deduce that so i guess that's a huge part of it and that's like a basic like journalism skill that i, I know a lot of people that aren't you don't have to have a journalism degree to do that but inherently by being a journalist you are that's like you know something that's just in your core being um but outside of that like from a skills perspective like i, I mean just creating media in general uh that was that's that's been huge and being able to source information that helps people um that that source information that i guess puts everything it puts puts things in easy terms to understand right and like understanding how to organize information uh like inverted pyramid if you're a journalism major you've heard that um it's just like what is important how can i communicate this what's important especially in a space like this where there's so much stuff that's not like um easy to understand you really need to be able to hit on the highest points that are easy to understand for most people quickly uh, or else you're going to lose people especially considering people who might not be very familiar with nfts um and might want to be like you know maybe they googled cool cats and they came across our article it's like well they need to kind of understand what a cool cat is like from the rip uh or else they're not gonna even care about the rest of the article so like figuring that out uh that's been huge and like organizing information in that way but yeah and i, I would say so there's so many different ways though really that it, it is like it is a very good fit um for like my skill set because of I, those two things specifically i guess my marketing background a little bit uh, uh my content marketing like the year i did it was good as well i learned a lot about like social and um a little bit about influencer marketing which has helped and a lot about seo um which at my at that job honestly i learned the most about seo with that content marketing job and that's been huge uh for driving traffic to our site from top shot uh from top shot to uh now ethereum nfts really focusing on ethereum nfts in our content like knowing what we should be focusing on for seo um and then inform helping our writers kind of make content for seo as well and, and then editing for seo um all of that stuff has been you know like it, that's not as much journalism but it comes from my like i got into i got into create i got into content marketing from journalism and then from there learn seo so that and, and i use that so much i mean that's a huge part of my job is bringing in traffic to the site from blogs so um and other seo as well like youtube seo is something that i've had to learn at this job as well but that's not really like yeah so it's not as much like straight journalism knowledge um but like figuring out what to put on those blogs and and what messages to communicate like what's important is the most important uh kind of like journalism skill that i i use like actively i feel like gotcha as you continue to move forward with with top shot and, and the other nfts uh within the digital asset community is there plans to it, does moment ranks have plans to expand and, and continue to value create valuations for uh other types of nfts is that is the i guess what's the forward thinking path for you guys and, and and what does that look like yeah um i hit on it a little bit before obviously with the community feature but i will say right now we already have ethereum nft valuation so like you can plug in your ethereum wallet metamask coinbase etc and uh it'll come up right away like you can see your valuation you could change your valuation based on how you want to value it like you base, base it on sales you can base it on like the rarest traits because trait rarity can change how your nft is valued um so we have that for ethereum but i will say we are um onboarding solana as well um which is a growing community although um much different than ethereum i would say like the the, the high, i i and no, no offense to solana but like the highest quality projects are on ethereum like the biggest most well-known builders are on ethereum but there's a lot of cool stuff happening on solana and it's also a lot more accessible for new people who are coming to the space so um it's something that we want to a huge part of like our content especially as we are continuing to expand our offerings is like how is like reaching those people who know what an nft is and uh, but they, they don't understand really like the communities behind them or why they would want to own it and i guess utility i hate using that but it's true um and like and some of these obviously don't have any like look i'm gonna be honest like some of them don't have any utility and that's just what it is you got rugged um but like um 
I would say, so with Solana, it's like that blockchain is great for people who are new to the space, right? And like, it, it, because there's not a lot of gas and it's, it, there, there, there really isn't gas at all. The transactions are fast. It's still hard to like figure out. You got to have seed phrase, all this stuff. So, um, but that's, a, that's like something that we're adding as well. And then, like I said, the community feature is a huge part of like the community kind of the hubs for NFTs is a huge part of, of what we're going to be doing going forward is, and building out like basically social feeds for these individual NFT communities that are like much more conducive to like community building than than like a discord ever could be um that actually people who there's so every single community like every single one has nft community has people that could literally build a phenomenal like business and have multiple different like outlets to do that of whether that's like graphic design or whether that's like uh partnerships or whether that's like i don't know um tweeting and marketing and like community managers like all these different things um is like they're in these communities but it's like these communities that even if they have community treasuries often are not leveraging the people that are in their community so um our idea is basically like being able to use these social feeds to leverage their communities to build their brands which is like pop, pop, that that's like you know we're, we're building for communities that care about decentralization that actually want to decentralize power in some ways and hand it power over to their communities in some ways obviously it's you know when you're building from an nft project you still gonna have a core team still gonna have founders so it's not truly decentralized and we understand that but at the same time like these these ideas of decentralization where people are able to share power in these communities and through the community treasury which was earned through royalties and through the the original sale um like that idea is what we really like is being able to basically create a startup through these nft communities and and really like that was one thing i noticed like last year i don't know that's kind of a sidetrack but i'll, I'll say it so i'm already in it like every nft project is like you when you're buying an nft like you 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 should be thinking about it as well especially like profile picture projects specifically uh you should you definitely should be thinking about it as like I am buying this investing basically in a startup. Like I'm basically like a, a little angel investor right now, like buying these NFTs because ultimately that's the way that that's the way that your investment goes up is that you think of it as, as the people that I'm buying this from are actually going to build this and, and uh, build a brand and like be something that's coveted. So that's a huge thing that you have to just consider uh, if you're buying NFTs and, and like, a thing that a lot also people just don't really see right um especially because a lot of these so far haven't really built things of value uh other than like building their you know like brands um but i think that now we're getting to a point where it start they've, they've just started last year like it's only eight minutes a year ago everything came after them so like mostly everything came after them so it takes a long time for these things to be built and i i think basically a lot of them now are, are decentralizing the power a little bit through community treasuries. And we want to kind of leverage that ability on moment ranks. Right. So I don't know. That was very long winded because I got distracted a few times, but yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's like empowering communities to do cool shit through their community treasuries. Um, and so, yeah, we're really, we're really excited about the idea of like building through community treasuries. That's super cool. That's super cool. And, and and it's neat to hear too how there's an awareness around there. It does need to be some leadership around these communities. As you said, there has to be founders and stuff like that. But but ultimately the 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 actions being taken are in the best interests of the communities to have hopefully have them run, you know, uh, as best they can autonomously, but but right, you know for for the people by the people basically yeah yeah now uh is there anything that you can speak of specifically that you're working on right now that uh you know is gonna that you're really excited about that that the, you got the content team working on that uh you know is poised to pop um i would say the the thing that i am most excited about well we, we um have we have something um big coming in june which is just like 
I can't say it, but it's it's like it's like we'll change the we'll change the dynamic of like who we are, um, and and what we what what how people see us as because a lot of people see us as just like for top shot because we have moment or moment ranks, and so that will be interesting to see. Uh, th- that's going to be a huge part of like coming from content and figuring out how figuring out how people see us, I guess, in like when we when we launch the community feature and stuff like that, um, and then. Um, other than that, I, I'm really excited for as we are doing that and as we're kind of bringing in more of an audience is like across different chains, uh, whether that's Ethereum, Solana, and then with our new community feature as well, just bringing people to our site is like uh, building out like uh, a like a, a content for beginners that, like I said, like know what NFTs are, but they don't know what NFTs are. Um, and so like that kind of content where that helps them kind of whether you want to become a collector or whether you just want to understand how to get started and create a MetaMask wallet, or you want to, you actually want to know like what makes a project, like what makes us, you know, the people who have been here for a year plus, like think that a project is good or like what are things to look for, what are scams to watch out for, all these things that people need to know is like, or like putting all of that and helping people to go from step one to, you know, okay, you are ready to, to actually trade NFTs now. Um, I, I'm kind of, we're building that out, which is really exciting. Um, and I, I think that that will help a lot of people because I think there's not a lot of there's a lot of beginner NFT content out there, but none of it is really organized and able to like go from step one to step, you know, like I said, like 10. Um, and people can easily get overwhelmed. So that's that's something that I guess I'm excited for. So those two. Um, yeah, the future of Moment Ranks, um, it kind of like just not distancing ourselves from Top Shot because those will always be that will always be kind of our core. We'll always have the Top Shot tools like the tools are going to be there but expanding i guess in that way of like beyond just being considered by much of the community as a top shot platform i think that we have big things coming to kind of assist in that and kind of make us look i mean to be quite honest make us look cool in the eyes of people who are collecting nfts outside of like the top shot ecosystem um because right now i think it's hard for them to see what else we're doing because we have moment our name so Right, right. So it's so it's hard to. Some might find it difficult to disassociate you guys from yeah from Top Shot. And also, like a lot of people's experience with NFTs for the first time was through Top Shot, and so and then they might have used Moment Ranks in that experience. And at that time, we didn't have anything else on our site. Um, even for months, I mean, for months we didn't have anything on our site. We launched Ethereum NFTs in October, I think. So that's about eight months uh, where it was basic. It was just Top Shot. We launched a fantasy game, but it was just still Top Shot. So, of course, people were still associated. We, we existed longer just being Top Shot than we have existed now, having Ethereum NFTs. And, and and not to mention the fact that our Ethereum NFT like platform has really dramatically improved with the back end and front end. It's much more reliable now in terms of like using it as a marketplace, in terms of seeing your valuations, and um, being able to look through rarity. Like, all this stuff is so much more reliable than it was when we first launched it. Like we probably had that reliable for like. I don't know, three months max uh, now, which is like, so, I mean, at the beginning it was definitely a little bit un- un- unstable, but it's continuously improved. So yeah. And like, so we definitely want to assist people. Or like we want to get back in the eyes of people who might've just seen us just for top shot in the past. And that's like a huge challenge for content and content marketing in general. Sure. Sure. Especially when they, people already have that, that kind of ingrained in association yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Well, uh, excited to see you know what you guys cook up in the next weeks and months, and and uh, you know it should be uh, it's exciting. I think that, I think the the other thing that you mentioned being a platform that sort of helps explain NFTs to people is going to yeah. be something that's yeah. hopefully really useful and and that a lot of people can take uh, from because that's as this landscape continues to grow and evolve. I mean that there's going to be more of a need for people to just you know come in and understand yeah what are the basics what's the 411 on this thing and and if you guys can provide that then all the better right yeah the thought is like kind of like a, a coin like a coinbase learn type of situation right where you're able to just like read read resources quickly and click through take quizzes uh what yeah I, I don't know I, I have a lot of ideas in terms of like quizzes that could be really fun um and and like making it engaging so we'll see um it's in the beginning stages, but it's something that we wanted to do for a long time. And it's just like, once we have that community feature built out, it's gonna be really important for us to get learned content out there as we kind of start to reach like more of a mainstream audience through through social media and stuff like that. So, yeah. 
Awesome. Well, Christian, this has been a phenomenal chat. Thanks for, for taking the time. For uh, sure. I'm Steve Lyon, your host. This is another episode of the Decent People Podcast. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. It was a lot of fun.